So in this video, I want to talk about the activation of the adaptive immune system in response to bacterial infection. So we started with kind of our first part, the activation of the innate immune system and said, well, the bacteria is going to be picked up by guards stationed throughout our tissue, which is going to be the macrophage and the dendritic cell. And the dendritic cell is going to be particularly important because this is a connector between the innate and the adaptive immune system. This is a cell that's going to personally travel to the lymph node in order to find, to get help and to activate T cells. So I've drawn here a lymph node, and though here's the afferent lymphatic vessel draining here the lymph node, and so here is a dendritic cell that we have seen in the previous video that ate up stuff from this bacteria and shows it proudly presenting it on MHC class 2. You can think about a dendritic cell being a news reporter that takes a snapshot from the site of infection and then travels to the lymph node and there is going to present what it has eaten, what it has found, and will try to get help. So now the dendritic cell is here and what it's going to do is it's just going to see if can, it, if it can activate a naive T cell. So I've drawn here some naive T cells. So they are not yet ready to fight an infection. They're just made in the bone marrow, got some education in the thymus, and then they're hanging out in the lymph node. And really just ready to see if somebody's going to come and activate them. Because a T cell is kind of our arrogant cell. It wants somebody personally to come and activate it. So the dendritic cell has its job, and it will host about um, thousands of visits per, per minute. We'll just see with his MHC molecule and the peptide, the bacterial peptide on this MHC molecule to see if a T cell re a receptor recognizes it. So we'll just see if any of this T cell receptor will recognize this peptide. So let's pose this um, T cell. So this is supposed to be the T cell receptor. This blue one is a TCR, the T cell receptor. And we're also going to pose that these are all CD4 T cells. So we're going to make this four in here because we're always going to get a CD4 response. So we're going to worry, worry now first about CD4. So CD4 T cells naive are going to sit here and wait. And so let's pose this T cell. This is a lucky guy, which will become activated by this dendritic cell that presents here the peptide via MHC class 2. So now it's not so easy to activate a T cell, so this is not enough just to be recognized by this T cell receptor. So we actually need three signals, so it's also called a three signal T cell activation. So this recognition of the T cell receptor of the peptide presented on MHC2, and then also the CD4 kind of gives the little extra hug, another control. So is it really um, MHC2 that is presenting it? So this is going to be signal one and then there's also a signal two which are some co-stimulatory molecules so there is uh, peptides expressed on uh, the T cell and some expressed on the dendritic cell that interact with, with each other that's called co-stimulation it's normally B7 on the dendritic cell and CD28 on uh, the T cell, and that's going to be signal two. Signal one and signal two together will help that the T cell starts making a very important proliferative molecule, which is R2, which stimulates the proliferation of T cells. And then also, and that's going to be signal three, the antigen presenting cell, in this case the dendritic cell, the D C here, is going to make some cytokines. And it, it's going to depend on which cytokines it's going to make in terms of which T cell we're going to get in the end. So this is going to be signal three, which makes then kind of the differentiation. Are we going to mediate a TH1 or a TH2 or a TH17 response, which we're not going to get now to. But we're just going to say, well, these three signals are going to be necessary to activate this um, T cell. And this is a CD4 T cell, so it's going to become a T helper cell. So therefore, once this is activated, 
it's going to undergo clonal expansion and we're going to make thousands of the same T cell. This T cell that get, got activated and all this daughter cells, these are clones from this T cell. So they're all, all going to have the same T cell receptor. So just make sure you draw the same T cell receptor because this is going to be clonal expansion. And we made now from this naive T cell a T helper cell. That's an effector cell. That means that this cell, the T helper cell, can now really contribute to the immune response, can help us get rid of the infection. And I'm going to show you soon how. But just to make sure that to see a difference, this was a naive T cell. And a naive T cell is just going to hang out here in the lymph node and wait for a couple of days if it gets activated. If it doesn't get activated, it will just move on to the next lymph node. And it's just circulating. And so we can also appreciate again that these lymph nodes are nothing else than dating parts. It's kind of like speed dating because this dendritic cell will just see, do you find somebody? Okay, if not, um, it's going to move on to the next lymph node. And also this naive T cells will only going to be here for a certain amount of time unless they're gonna, then they're going to leave the lymph node and hang out somewhere else. So there's always circulation, recirculation in this lymph node in order to kind of have the highest chance that um, the dendritic cell that comes with a specific peptide will find a T cell that it can activate.